Sports fans in Ohio are of course prepping for the Super Bowl, but on the basketball court, the one NBA franchise in the seventh most populated state in North America is back on top and on track for the playoffs for the first time without LeBron James in about a quarter century. The humble yet electric third year man out of Vanderbilt University in Darius Garland has put the Cavs on his back with his prime John Wall-esque quickness, CP3-esque managing of the pace, and Rajon Rondo-esque vision. Combine Darius with a generationally shifting tall ball starting lineup consisting of three seven-footers, along with solid wing players in Isaac Okoro and Seti Osman, plus a few solid veteran players in Kevin Love and Rondo, you would have thought that'd be enough for Cleveland to make a fairly deep playoff push. But after acquiring a six foot six shot creating master, a man who's averaged at least 19 points per game in three different seasons, now the Cleveland Cavaliers vicious attack has become even stronger. So make sure you stay tuned to see the factors that could potentially lead Cleveland to their second title within a decade. Right quick though, only 11.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. Karis LeVert wasn't efficient from the field in his debut with the Cavaliers, but for a team that's built up a record that's contended for the number one seed without him, the former Brooklyn Net and Indiana Pacer has visibly made the Cavs much more dynamic and tough to stop. Cleveland's been the best story in the NBA all year, and signing Rajon Rondo has somewhat helped fill the hole of the permanently injured Colin Sexton and Ricky Rubio. With that being said, despite the first-time All-Star and Darius Garland's top-notch value, Cleveland badly required more shot manufacturing from their guard positions. They were in need of another quarterback who, without having a play ran for him, could rupture defenses by penetrating into the lane and unlatching open shots for both himself and the four other guys around him at any given time. We looked at the Cavs' brilliant front office led by Kobe Altman in this upload, which you can watch after this. About a week after that, the Cavs acquired one of the best candidates on the 2022 trade market, agreeing to a deal with the Pacers to add the slashing scorer Karis LeVert for what should be an interesting stretch run in Cleveland. A product of the University of Michigan and Pickerington High School in Ohio, Levert's back in his home state with a chance to do something special this spring. A candidate for the Coach of the Year and J.B. Bickerstaff spoke on the acquisition of Karras, saying it's the silkiness in his game and how he can manage to get by his guy. It's like an offbeat rhythm. So guys that are defending him don't know when he's going to go, when he's going to stop. He's a tough shot maker, so it's really difficult to game plan for a guy like that. End quote. We'll discuss the Ben Simmons for James Harden swap in some sense in tomorrow's video, but the full details on another blockbuster deal on Sunday are that Cleveland gets Levert and Miami's 2022 second round pick, Indiana gets the injured Rubio and his $17.8 million expiring contract, the rebuilding Pacers also get a protected 2022 first round pick, the Houston Rockets 2022 second rounder, and Utah's second in 2027. Karras missed two months last season following the removal of a cancerous tumor on his kidney. Amazingly, the former Wolverine, Levert, returned and didn't miss a beat in Indianapolis, posting a shade under 20 points and 5 assists per game in 74 outings as a pacer between 2021 and 2122. According to TheRinger.com, there's 48 players with a usage rate higher than 25%, who've played at least 1,500 minutes over the past two campaigns. Levert ranks 45th in true shooting percentage and 43rd in box plus minus. He also ranks number 43 in value over replacement. That may seem like a low ranking, but given most of those 48 players Karras is next to are above average players, him being ranked in that advanced specific category in itself is impressive. From Cleveland's perspective, this acquisition displays a confidence from upper management that they're well equipped to go the distance and get out of their conference in the upcoming postseason. The raw numbers back up that belief, given the Cavs are 34 and 21, with the third best point differential in the East and number two ranked team defense across the association. Something the numbers also prove is that Cleveland's been desperate for more downhill drives to the basket, as since Rubio went down, 
no Cleveland player besides Garland has averaged even six and a half drives to the basket per game. Levert definitely covers up for that, given he averages 16.3 drives this season, 10th most in the NBA, and he's shooting 50.5% on those attacks. Karras may not be incredibly quick at the point of attack, but he's a very crafty slasher who finds his way to the rim in his own way, plus man's capable of stepping back or pulling up in traffic with an array of abilities deep within his shot creating bag. Karras is shooting 47.4% on attempts very late in the shot clock from 7 to 4 seconds, which signifies his ability to get buckets under pressure. To get to his spot, Levert thrives off utilizing nifty change of pace dribbles. Equipped with a well-suited NBA shooting guard body at 6'6", 205, Karras can shield off defenders, which allows him to use his length to release shots from a variety of angles, and his vision to find teammates in traffic is also very solid. Levert's game isn't based around facilitating by any stretch, but he's a steady passer who consistently makes the right reads without coughing it up too much. Among high usage players, only Chris Dapps, Porzingis, DeMar DeRozan, Anthony Davis, and Devin Booker have a lower turnover rate this year. Karras ranks in the 81st percentile in points produced per possession as a pick and roll ball handler this year. That's according to Synergy Sports Game Tracking, by the way. But luckily for Levert's playing style, now he gets to play screen and dive two-man games with Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, Laurie Markkinen, and Kevin Love. Shockingly, this is the seventh Cavaliers video I've posted this year, something I didn't think I'd be saying before 21-22 kicked off. Seti Osman's been a player that's gone completely overlooked in those uploads, that's why we're evaluating his impact and journey in today's vid. Over the half a decade he spent in Cavalier threads, Osman's proved to be a solid and efficient scoring wing. At 6'7", he can take defenders off the bounce with above average ball handling and balance creating buckets for his size. Seti was selected 31st overall by the Timberwolves in 2015, with his draft rights being immediately traded to the Forest City in exchange for Tyus Jones. Seti ultimately opted to go back overseas, winning multiple Turkish Pro Championships, as well as becoming a three-time Basketball Super League All-Star from 2015 to 17. Then, Osman would pack up and leave everything behind in his home country to pursue his dream in the most famous, highly paid, and most talented basketball league in the world, joining the Cleveland Cavaliers for the 2017-18 campaign. The at-the-time 22-year-old would play out his rookie year mostly as an end-of-the-bench guy in the final year of LeBron's tenure in a Cavaliers uniform. A year after competing in the Turkish Finals, Seti got some run in the NBA Finals, albeit for just eight minutes over two games against the Golden State Warriors. Osman got mostly garbage time minutes, but being able to take bits and pieces from the greatest point forward of all time is invaluable experience that Seti's taken advantage of. Following LBJ's second departure, Osman's been a staple on the wing for Cleveland, receiving at least 23 minutes each year since then. 2021-22 has seen Osman post his fourth different season already in his young career, in which he's averaged double-figure scoring. In three of those years, including this current campaign, while posting at least 10 points and two assists, the pride of Turkey has made a very solid 42% of his overall field goal attempts and 35% of his three-pointers. The Cavs added firepower to bolster their pursuit of the top spot in the East, and their chances of withstanding seven-game slugfests in April, May, and June. More importantly, they did so without losing any of their most valuable prospects and maintaining flexibility for the long term. If Levert's a smash hit, the Cavs can look to extend him in the offseason. If it doesn't pan out, no big deal. He and Love come off the books in 2023, giving Cleveland a ton of cap space to work within building around Garland, Mobley, and Allen while making a committed move to go for it right now. The future is now in Cleveland, so what's your early prediction for the Cavs 2022 playoff run? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Two Speaks winners, since we skipped Speaks last video, they go to Boston Haltane and Andy Wong. Pause to read their comments as well as the honorable mentions. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one 
Dflow signing off.